Hi everyone, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be um, a bunch of ebooks that I've accumulated kind of over the past month. So it wasn't like a bang it out kind of a haul type of a thing, but I realized that I had taken advantage of some deals online and have slowly kind of built up a little bit of an ebook collection. And I am someone who, like, when it comes down to it, I will always pick a physical book over an ebook, like, no questions asked. And I'm surely not gonna spend 13 bucks on an ebook. If I'm spending $13, you best believe I'm walking out of a bookstore with a book in my hand, or there's a package that I'm opening and there's a giant book inside of it. So I am not, um, I'm never gonna be someone who's gonna be like a, fully ebook kind of a collection like hello look behind me but i appreciate the value of an ebook i appreciate getting it through hoopla getting it through my library um i appreciate netgalley ebooks i appreciate the convenience of being able to just like bring your ipad and like be able to read your books with you so i don't hate on an ebook but i am just like a traditional person at the end of the day so <laughs> all that explanation said and done um yeah i found a bunch of ebooks um over the past few weeks which i'm super excited about and i paid um four dollars for one of them and that's the most expensive one i got a couple for free um not like net galley kind of things and i got some real good newbies so i'm really excited to talk about them and that's what we're gonna do today the first book I picked up is The Missing by C.L. Taylor. And she is a new to me author. And I discovered her listening to a author writing podcast. Um, and she writes psychological thrillers. She's from the UK. And I was like listening to the podcast and sort of simultaneously like looking up her books online. And they are harder to come by in the US. I think Amazon has like two of them, but you can get them through Book Depository. They don't exist in my libraries. And I found um, two of them on iBooks. And this is the one I picked up. This was like the $4 book. So I'm gonna give her a go and I'm very excited about it. And this one came out a couple years ago and it is psychological thriller. And it was likened to Reconstructing Amelia, which I haven't read, but Reconstructing Amelia was likened to The Night Olivia Fell, which I have read. Um, so kind of like had me at that. But it is about a 15 year old boy who goes missing in this one. And his whole family obviously is like trying to figure out what happened, scrambling to find him, blaming themselves, all of this stuff. And I think it's sort of like, he's missing for six months and at this stage they make kind of a plea um an offer like a reward you know if anyone has the information and sort of at the time they make this plea it's kind of like that's where things start to go wrong and this is a family who apparently has tons of secrets that they are keeping from not just the outside world but from one another and they start to uh, kind of come out and unravel at this stage of the game and you know is their son alive? Is he not? Where is he? What led to his disappearance? And I think we focus on the mom as the protagonist here. And, you know, she's very much sort of like, did someone in her family have something to do with what happened to him? And kind of the tagline is like, a mother's instinct is never wrong, or is it? So that's about all I know about this one, and I am totally fine with that. Uh, but I'm excited to read a new author, and of course I'm excited because it's a thriller, and that's what I love. The next book I picked up is Trust Me by Hank Philippi Ryan. And she is someone that I have been interested in reading and just haven't picked up a book by her, for, again, for no good reason. And I have seen her at countless writing conferences. She is an investigative journalist in Boston. So she's, if you are, I would say, like from New England, particularly from Boston, you know exactly who Hank Philippi Ryan is. And she's won like 30 something Emmy Awards. She has this insane career. And at some stage of the game, she decided like, I'm gonna write books too. And she has like, I think like 10 books that are out now. She is fascinating to listen to and she just is like you can imagine because she's on tv she has like such an amazing presence to her but i have seen her at um multiple writers conferences very much enjoy her i again i 
did a whole video on podcasts that I've been obsessed with. And I think it's actually going to go up after this one. So like, <laughs> wait for that. But I was listening to a podcast with her too. And I'm just like, why am I not picking up her books? Because she's so intriguing to me. I need to read her stories. So I picked this one up. And this is one where again, it's a thriller. I don't know too much about it. And I believe she has like some series, but this is a standalone. And this is kind of like, um, there is a woman who is accused of committing this heinous murder and she insists that she's innocent. And then we have an investigative journalist who I think like her life has basically fallen apart and it's in ruins and I don't know why and I don't really care, but the two of them partner together and it is like, some sort of cat and mouse game and it's thrilling and it's supposed to be fast paced and it's sort of like how can you trust anyone when you don't trust yourself i don't even know but i am here for it i'm excited to read my first book by her um it's gotten a lot of really good reviews so here we go i'm finally gonna read me some hank philippi ryan the next book I picked up is The Invited by Jennifer McMahon. And this book actually just came out in April of this year. And it's like a thriller, ghost story kind of mystery. And sidebar, if you're not subscribed to sort of like those daily Kindle deals or somehow connected with iBooks and um, BookBub, who one of my subscribers just told me about, which is another one where you get sort of these daily deals, do it because you can find brand new books for like three dollars which like the next three i'm going to talk about that's exactly what happened um and also a lot of writers on their instagram or their twitter will announce if they're like a deal of the day type of a thing um which is also what happens so i literally got this book for 2.99 and it came out like two months ago um but this is a ghost story like I said, thriller type of a thing. And it's about a married couple, Helen and Nate. And they are sort of like, I guess like craving the simpler life. So they decide to move out into the country and have like this big plot of land and they are going to build their dream house. And sort of as they're, I don't know if it's like as they're building or as they're designing or learning about the area, there's some sort of like mysterious past to where they're planning to live. And Helen looks into it and sort of, I think, comes upon sort of this ghost story mystery about um, Hattie somebody or other. <laughs> and sort of Helen has, I don't know if she has like a fascination with artifacts or if it's part of her career. Again, this is a little bit vague. I'm sorry, but it's kind of just, I'm going off what the synopsis is. Um, but she starts to accumulate some artifacts and incorporate them into the house. So there's like some wood beams from an old schoolhouse and some different things. And it becomes a question of like, are they building the house of their dreams or are they building kind of like a house of menace and all sorts of like bad things are about to happen to them. So I'm guessing they're inviting the bad things in, hence the title, but I don't actually know if that's true because I haven't read it yet, but I am excited to. Um, so yeah, that's the invited. The next book I picked up is No Exit by Taylor Adams. And this one came out in January of this year. And it's another thriller. I'm sorry, guys, I want to say these are probably all thrillers. Um, but you know, it's me. But this one, I have seen some mixed reviews on it. So some people like completely like it. Some people, I think, have a hard time suspending some disbelief with it. But either way, I'm in, I'm down for the ride. Um, it is about a girl named Darby. And she is, I think this is where people have the issue. She is trying to like drive home to see her mom who I think is like really sick and she winds up getting caught in this snowstorm. And I've like seen some people's reviews where they were like, why would anyone like intentionally drive into a snowstorm? It's completely not believable. But A, if she didn't drive into the snowstorm and get stuck, there's no story. And B, people drive places because they need to get places and run into inclement weather. And that's why people get like run off the road or stranded or like <laughs> these things happen, but come on, it's a book. It's not supposed to be like, it's not somebody's true story. It's not true crime. It's a book. So she gets stuck in a snowstorm with a whole bunch of other people. And I think they're like stuck at a rest stop. So here we go. Locked room mystery. That's a trope I love. And I think pretty early on, she sees that, um, there's a girl, I think like in a cage in the, car next to hers parked in the lot so clearly somebody who's at this like rest stop diner or wherever the heck all these people are stuck at is a kidnapper and obviously pretty dangerous and i think this becomes like kind of 
sort of a, a race to survive type of a thing. Um, I had listened to one person's review and they were like, it's one of those books where like out of the gate, like you know who's good and who's evil. And again, like I think it's fine. I think it just sounds like a good ride, a good mystery, a good thrill. And sometimes that's all you need. So I'm here for it. The next book I got is probably the one that I'm most excited about, and it's Peter Swanson's new book, Before She Knew Him. And this one came out in March, and this is another thriller. You guys know I love Peter Swanson. It's another book set like in and around Boston, which I love, and I have no doubt that it's going to be great because I love him. So this is a book about a couple, Hen and her husband Lloyd, yeah, I'm reading, and they are in um, kind of the suburb outside of Boston, suburb um, outside of Boston, and sort of, you know, looking to enjoy a nice quiet life, I think. So Hen is, I wanna say she's like an artist. She has some history of some mental health issues. Um, and I think, like I say, like they're just looking for sort of a quieter, calmer existence out there and i think there's like a neighborhood block party or some sort of house party and not like in a college house party kind of a sense but like a getting to know you kind of a thing and they meet the neighbors and this happens early in the book this is jacket flap stuff obviously because i haven't read it yet and she is in the neighbor's house and notices i think in the husband's study there is um an object that he has which is something that used to belong to a boy that I don't know if Hen knew him or if she was just fascinated with the case of a like a 15 year old boy who was murdered years ago and all of a sudden she sort of has this moment of like I think my neighbor's a murderer and I think he murdered this boy all these years ago and my sense is that there is an element of like not believing her she's a little bit of the unreliable narrator because she has had some issues in the past but that doesn't slow her down from, I think, like looking into this. So I'm not sure if like he knows she knows or how sort of she's investigating this or kind of how this whole thing transpires, because if I knew that, what would be the point of reading the book? But I am so excited for a new Peter Swanson book. Love him. The deal was amazing. I would have read it either way, but I'm so glad that I have had, um, an ounce of self-control when it comes to buying new releases um, because I just got three for under $10. The next book I got is One for Sorrow by Sarah Denziel. And I'm gonna correct what I said at the beginning. I actually paid 99 cents for this one through Amazon Kindle deal of the day. So um, not quite free, but it kind of feels free. And she wrote Saving April, which is a book that I did an entire review on um, of Saving April versus The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, because Saving April came out first and sort of in the past um, six months when sort of all these stories about A.J. Finn slash Dan Mallory were coming out, there was some um, belief that a lot of the woman in the window was taken from Saving April. So I wanted to read both of them, which I did, and I talked all about it in that video. I also wanted to support Sarah Denziel as an author because there are a lot of things in her book that do show up in The Woman in the Window, and I do feel like she got gypped. Um, so I wanna read more books by her. I also enjoyed the book. So anyway, this one is about a nurse at a psychiatric hospital and I just finished The Silent Patient. So I am like in a total psychiatric hospital kind of a mode right now. And this nurse, Leah, is someone who, it is, um, it is a hospital for people who basically have committed like terrible crimes. So it's not people with just, um, who need to be committed for maybe mental health reasons, but it's because they've done terrible things, much like The Silent Patient. Um, although, these books sound absolutely nothing alike in any sense, so don't get me wrong there. Um, so Leah, for her, her patients, she's a nurse, are always first and foremost, they are people. So it's not about the crimes that they committed, it's not about who they were in the past, it's who they are now. And she winds up really connecting with this patient um, named Isabel, who, I don't know how old she is when the book opens, but when she was 14 years old, she was accused of murdering a child. And I don't know if it was a friend of hers. Again, this is all a little bit vague, but that's okay. Um, but basically it was like covered in blood, accused of this crime and has been confined to this facility. But the more Leah gets to know her, the more she thinks that like Isabel could not have committed this crime. 
And there is simultaneously, I think a, I don't know if he's like a crime podcaster or a crime journalist, but tropey, tropey, loving it. And he also believes in Isabel's innocence. And the question becomes, did her family frame her for this murder? Is she actually innocent? It sounds like Leah's got some baggage that's coming into this. I'm sure the crime journalist podcaster guy has got some stuff that's motivating him to look into this, but either way, totally intrigued. Um, yeah, so I'm down for this one too. The last book I picked up is False Step by Victoria Helen Stone. And she wrote Jane Doe, which I reviewed, I wanna say in April. And that was, um, it was sort of like pitched a psychological thriller, but I think it was more just sort of like psychological. And that was a book where um, I talked about how I wanted it to be way darker than it was. And I felt like the author held back and didn't go like full darkness, no stars, which is what I was hoping for. But there was a lot about the book and the writing that I really enjoyed. So I'm happy to give her another try as well. And side note, this is the one that was free. So I didn't know this. Maybe I've been living under a rock or maybe it's not something new. As like a Prime member, you get like a free book every month, but they give you like six or seven books to choose from. So I just signed up for this deal because I think it was probably one of those things that was under my radar. Obviously it was. Um, but this is one of the books that you could have picked for this month, so I did. Um, and it is psychological thriller. I don't know if it actually is based on just how her first book was pitched, but this sounds really intriguing. It is about um, a young boy goes missing. I think they're in Colorado. Yeah, they're in Colorado. So this little boy Tanner goes missing and he winds up being found um, sort of like unharmed on this hiking trail. This guy is like out for a hike, um, brings him home safe, unclear what actually happened to him, how he wound up there. Um, I'm guessing the boy doesn't remember unclear, all very unclear at this stage of the game. But the guy who rescues him, this guy Johnny, who I think is like a personal trainer and just sort of like an average Joe, goes from sort of being average Joe to this huge hero. And I think Tanner comes from this very rich family and gets lots of media attention on him and all that kind of stuff. And Johnny's wife, Victoria, is like not jazzed about all the attention because it sounds like they have some secrets in their marriage and some secrets to keep. And all of this attention is maybe forcing some things to the surface. I don't know what sort of lies are going on behind the scenes, but it sounds like there's some and she is fiercely committed to protecting everything. And at the same time, it sounds like um, sort of whatever led to Tanner's disappearance starts to come out. So lots of different things at play here. Like I said, I am excited to kind of give Victoria Helen Stone another try because there's a lot about Jane Doe I enjoyed. I am hoping this one does go there, whatever goes there means in the sense of this book. Um, I'm hoping it keeps me engaged and thrilled and all of that good stuff. But that is my final book. So that does it for my ebooks. And I am now officially like a woman obsessed with getting a deal on a good ebook because I feel like I have been missing out um, a lot over the past few months. And again, like, I mean, I need a new book like I need a hole in the head, but still, if I can get it for nothing or next to nothing or for a good bargain, why the heck not? So let me know if you guys have read any of these books, thoughts, whatever's about them. Always want to hear those kinds of things. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed already, go for that too, because there's going to be more bookish content coming um, in the future. So thank you guys for watching today. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you next time around. Bye everybody.